support the library. And uh, I think that, uh, I don't know what the drastic level uh, is that uh, the uh, amount that's going for uh, communications, but I'm supportive of that also. And uh, I would be interested in trying to do some shared services with the Board of Education to try to mitigate some of that. Thank you, Mr. Mann. I support Glenfield Cable Television on the a structured, well-qualified manager who is experienced and who knows how to run a television station. In terms of the budget, I just can't understand what would get into the mind of all of them to want to cut the library budget. Her own budget that she introduced, that she gave to the government body, and she wants to cut it by 40%. It just doesn't make sense to anyone. And for even to entertain that thought, that notion, it demonstrates that there is no commitment to education, there is no commitment to providing the resources that the unemployed need in terms of job search, there is no commitment to the number of people who go to the library to be tutored, to learn, to read and write. There is no commitment to literacy. And how could that thought even be formulated in the mind of anyone to cut the library budget by 40% and beyond me? Read my lips. We are not cutting the library. Thank you. Um, now, this question, uh, I'm going to uh, start with you, uh, Reverend Brown. Um, is there a plan to lower or eliminate flood insurance rates, especially for the first ward? People may also be losing their homes due to the uh, 2,000-plus premiums we are paying. Uh, is there a plan? I, I don't know the plan, but there, there needs to be a plan in place for flood insurance. I know that during uh, uh, one of the severe storms that we had, it was a, it was a big issue, and there were uh, homeowners, you know, had really suffered. So I believe that there needs to be a plan in place uh, for flood for uh, people who experience the hazards and uh, the loss, you know, from floods. So I think that we really need to look at that and sort of implement a, a plan for it. And Ms. Taylor. I believe that was one of the initiatives of the lady councilman storage to make sure that I believe at one time the city was looking to do that would have adversely affected the residents of the first ward. And that just came from the hard work of the existing uh, city council. So I would support whatever research they've done to make sure, I mean, one of the responsibilities of being a public servant is anything that comes across your desk and being back on private, you need to read and you need to really take the time to understand how it's going to impact every one of your constituents because of the Mr. Mann. Because of an investment that we have made in the city, the North Avenue uh, part of the city that runs through the first wall, we invested a significant amount of money in the building that roadway. And as a result of the investment, many of the homes in that area no longer Flood. And there are many other homes in different parts of the city that no longer suffer from flood. But yet, they have to pay an exorbitant amount of money to provide for flood insurance. That needs to end. That needs to stop. And my colleagues and I, we put money in the budget this last year to hire a hydraulic engineer to do what is necessary to alleviate that problem and to submit whatever reports are necessary to HUD. We cannot do the day-to-day. -day. It's up to the administration to execute and to make sure that that happens. We have provided the funding and now the administration has to deliver. And so we support creating a situation that will provide relief to homeowners mm -hmm. who are paying unnecessary flood insurance. Um. Mr. Abdul-Hawk. 
That seems to be a council bad situation. So I, I agree with that. Okay, thank you. Um, I, this is going to have to be our um, last question, and it comes in a variety of different ways. Uh, and I'm going to uh, start with you, Reverend Brown. Um, there's two questions. If elected, how will it affect your work in the church? Um, uh, but also, will you have time to read all of the voluminous materials that are required to do this? And that applies to all of you. So, it, but let's start with you. How will it affect your life? <laughs> how, how will being on the city council affect my life? Yes, how will it affect your uh, life in the church, uh, and being able to read, and um, will you be able to effectively do it? I think it will enhance my sermons. No, I, I think, I think really that, um, you know, I, you know, serving now on a, on a commission is two times a week, I mean two times a month. Serving on the uh, city council will also be two times a month, and it's, and it's the day that I'm off for uh, city council, which is Monday. But before I decided to run for this, I had a church meeting and brought my church uh, together. And I told them the reasons that I wanted to run and what did they think about them. And they thought that it was a very good idea. I got the, uh, I got the approval of my official boards and uh, really almost 100% of the membership who, were, who was at the meeting all agreed that it would be a good idea for me uh, to be a part of this because you know a lot of people look at uh, pastors and religious leaders and they want to know how why would they run for uh, political office? Well, when I look at uh, when I look at the scripture, I see even in the uh, Old Testament, you know, that the prophets often went before uh, the kings and uh, on behalf of the people. Even in the New Testament, we see uh, Jesus as being political. If you look at Matthew chapter 5, you see that he uh, addresses a lot of social action issues. Okay, uh, Ms. Taylor, uh, if elected, how will it affect your life? And do you have the time to read all this stuff? <laughs> Well, you know, there's a lot of reading on the Board of Education. I've been there for 10 years. Um, I had the experience, and you know, I waited a while to get back into public life. Because my children were young and they're older now. I think it certainly not enhanced my quality of life as my children are entering the high school and middle school. And I'll be a better teacher. I think I can give a window to my students at Plainville High School to civic life. I like to be a mom. I like to model the behavior. You can, you can be a person and you need people to be engaged in civic life. They need to see people every day. They interact with involved in civic life. And they need, we want younger people to interact. So I want to follow that behavior. Hopefully I'll inspire some of them. Thank you. Um, Mr. Abdul uh I'm going to ask you, uh, how will it affect your life if you get elected? Uh, Can you do it all? <laughs> yeah, I'm a strange person. I like to read that kind of stuff. Plus, I used to read a lot of it when I was on the Board of Education. Okay. Mr. Mann? When we elected, I will continue to be the servant leader that I am. Okay. That's a short one. <laughs> I'll take that. Um, and that's pretty good time because it gives us uh, 15 minutes to do 12 minutes of speaking. Um, so uh, that will be the conclusion of our questions, and thank you very, very much. You did write well. I mean, I could read your stuff. <laughs> um, so I thank you for that. Now we're going to go to the, the closing statements, and each of the candidates will uh, speak in reverse order to what uh, they did opening, which means that the first speaker this time will be uh, Reverend Tracy Brown. First, I want to uh, thank you for inviting me to come to be a part of this forum. I just want to say, if elected, I will work very hard to, uh, I will work very hard, not just, uh, you know, uh, talking a good game, because I hear a lot of people talking, you know, a good game in terms of reducing property, property taxes, um, but I really will work hard to do that. I live in this city. My mother, who is, uh, 
a senior citizen lives in the city, owns her own home. I will work hard, especially for programs for youth, for employment, uh, for not just affordable housing, but quality housing. I care about the city, I love this city, and it is evident by the work that I do um, at uh, Ruth Fellowship Ministries that benefit not just the members of Ruth Fellowship, but it benefits the entire city. Uh, the Salvation Army, the Red, the Red Cross, uh, not the Salvation Army, the Red Cross sends people to Ruth Fellowship Ministries for food and for um, rental assistance. Uh, it seems to me that uh, an agency that will be named nameless seems to be the only problem in this city. And every time somebody's running for uh, a political office or anything, they always bring up this agency. Well, you know, when I have people come to my office, they don't say, uh, Pastor, you know, I need you to talk, you know, that I'm having problems with my, my sewer bill or my uh, solid waste, but they come with me with real with problems with unemployment, problems about crime, problems with drugs and homelessness, domestic violence, gang violence, a uh, family infrastructure. Uh, this is what they come uh, uh, with, not just uh, the agency that will remain nameless, but, you know, we have problems that we need to address and stop trying to use this agency uh, to get elected. Thank you. Next speaker is Veronica Brownie Taylor. I'd like to thank Bosch for hosting for this forum. I'd like to thank you all for coming out. Um, here's the thing making change in the city is going to take hard work. While our, my opponent doesn't want to mention ABC, the PMUA, I've been knocking on doors, it's important to people in this community. You cannot run for public office. And, and not and say, I can't comment, because it's a conflict of interest. People need to know where you stand on the issues. One thing, you may not like what I have to say, but I'm a straight shooter. I show up, I do the hard work. I have a proven track record. I built a school in, a school in the west end of town while I was a member of the Plainwood Board of Education, and people didn't want that to happen. So I, I know how to deal with hostile crowds. I also know how to bring people along. We passed a $33 million referendum in an urban school district on the first read, and we did that by knocking on doors and working with everyone who didn't agree with us to begin with, but you know what? Seven times, seven ways. We kept that communication. We communicated why this was important for the whole town, and we did it. Many of you in this room helped us, at this table helped us get it done. So, you know, you can't remain silent on issues that are important. So yes, it's the PMUA is important to people. And while my home has remained silent on the issue, you can't do that and not be a public servant. You have to get on record. You have to let people know where you stand. You have to show up and do the hard work. And running a grassroots campaign, our headquarters is 500 Watch on Avenue. Corey and Rebecca have endorsed me. I need your help. If you like what you heard tonight, show up. I need people to knock on doors and make phone calls. On Tuesday, June 5th, vote for President Barack Obama, and then vote for me, Veronica Taylor, 7B, and vote for Adrian Mapp. I live in the third ward on West 4th Street. I will be supporting Adrian Mapp. So you can vote column A for him, column A for Barack Obama, and 7B for Veronica Taylor. Thank you. And the next speaker, the next speaker is Rashi abdul -Hah. Um, thank you. Thank you, Fosh. Um, we must work together. We must cooperate with each other. We must listen to one another. If we do, we will be able to figure out which way is up. We're having some problems doing that right now. We made great progress when I was on the Board of Education, but the key to our actions was that we put doing the right thing out front. Martin Luther King said, the time is always right to do the right thing. I have faith and I'm ready to do the right thing. Thank you. Thank you.